Watch the Shark MMA Show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Mark the Shark MMA Show. It's a brand new year, 2021. And hopefully this year is better than 2020. <laughs> I don't think I can get any worse than that. But this year, we start off on a good note. In this uh, interview, I interview a film producer and martial artist called Jeremy Nori. Nori. Um, he talks about his documentary called Why We Fight. Before we start the interview, I'm going to show you a clip from the documentary called Why We Fight. Again, it's available on Amazon.com. Um, it's a great video, especially if you're into martial arts and you're into documentaries. I heard everybody, lights, camera, action. Most fighters come from a specific upbringing. Something happened to them that they chose to be a fighter. What boxing really did to me was save my life. It's to totally personal, I never looked at even jujitsu of like, oh, I want to make money competing. No, that wasn't a goal of mine. Boom, and you could hear it. And then I was hyper aware of the crowd because everybody's like, ooh. Everybody I kicked in the head, I would drop. I can take a good punch. <laughs> it is a confidence booster. I think any person who is insecure, if they learn how to protect themselves, your wall comes down. So much fear that you thought you had really just lied from that one insecurity of like, I wouldn't know what to do. Big risk, big reward, and you don't always win when you gamble, but sometimes you win really, really big and it changes your life. Hi guys, this is Mark the Shark Retorto, and welcome to the Mark the Shark MMA show live on Twitch. I appreciate you guys keeping up and watching me. Make sure you follow. If you happen to have an Amazon Prime account, you can actually subscribe for free. Um, and don't forget to follow me on my social media pages. The Mark the Shark MMA Show on Facebook. Mark BJJ Fighter on Twitter. And Mark underscore Retorto on Instagram. And again, it's Mark with a C and not a K. And also don't forget to go to the website, MarkTheSharkMMAShow.com, where you can make a donation to help support the contest. And you can also get t-shirts and hoodies, kind of like this one that I'm wearing here. Not too shabby, right? Um, and also don't forget that um, me and my daughter's got books that we have both written. Hers is called the Invisible Girl series. Mine, I have two. Uh, one's called The Cabal, The Saga Begins. And my second book, which is out right now, is called Mark is the Vampire. It's the first book in the Dark uh, World Chronicle series. So check it out at www.retortofamilybooks.com. All right, guys. When we come back, we'll start the show. I am sure you're going to love it. This week's episode is great. Make sure you follow me every week on this channel on Saturday. And don't also don't forget that I also have a podcast, the Mark the Shark MMA Show, MMA show um, which is available on Podbean. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and hit the alert button so you get updates. And also you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This podcast episode is also brought to you by Retorto Family Books. If you're interested in great books for your children to read, get books by Christina Retorto. And if you're interested in action, thriller, suspense books, you can get The Cabal, The Saga Begins, or fantasy books like Marcus the Vampire, both written by your host, Mark the Shark Retorto. Again, go to www.retortofamilybooks.com. All right, guys, we are on the Mark the Shark show again. Today, I got a very special guest, film producer Jeremy, Jeremy Nori. How are you doing today, Jeremy? I'm doing well. Thank you for okay. having me. Right. I didn't pronounce your last name right. I just want to make sure. Nori, yeah, that's right. You did well. Okay. Just want to, just want to make sure. People so confuse it with uh, Chuck Norris all the time. So it's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of Chuck Norris myself. Um, so... Give us a little bit about your uh, background information about yourself. Sure. And, and we'll get to the, the surprise as to why we're really discussing this. To discuss. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as, as far as like MMA and everything is concerned, I, uh, I became a fan during the early, early years. So growing up, I grew up in California 
and you know i didn't uh train in a lot of i did taekwondo as a kid but uh when i first saw those first ufcs it was very very diff different like pro wrestling was popular there are all kinds of other like basically fake um like fighting type uh, events and things like yeah, that yeah. but uh the ufc was so different and and I, I saw ufc 2 as my first experience and i was just hooked right away i started um going to the video store and trying to find other uh tapes you know of of uh, other events and it was so early on there was only a handful um like less than 10 for sure and so I started to try and keep up with it as the new ones would come out and pop up at the video store. I would rent them and I would watch, you know, the whole tournament and it started getting kind of, you know, I think it was like UFC four or something like that. It was like, it was, it was a mess. The, um, like an alternate i think it was steve jenham who won that yeah one. Was, yeah was yeah i remember that one and um he came in as the alternate for the finale yeah yeah, yeah so like as a as a fan watching it it was not it was anticlimactic you kind of thought oh this here comes this guy you didn't fight all the fights yeah and, i think he got chosen because that other guy harry Hagler, or something he had two h's his name he hit his head against the locker and knocked himself out <laughs> Yeah, yeah, long right. Hair. I just remember he had like long blonde hair, and he had like uh, it was like Harry Hagler or something. The guys, the guys in those days were like tough man competitors. They were yeah. just you know hoodlums. Some of them were martial artists. Some of them were just maybe off the bar stool. And there was like some greatness to that, and some like kind of um, it was it, it was kind of ridiculous in some ways too. But I loved it. And, and I watched for a long time. It went off pay-per-view. It got banned. It, it, it started to become this whole other thing. I lost track of it for a long time. And a friend of mine, uh, well, a new person that I met and became friends with, told me one time that they were uh, training. And they were doing jiu-jitsu and, and stuff. And I thought, oh, wow, I remember that. And, and then he's like, yeah, the UFC still, it's still going. It's on the internet now. And, and he started showing me stuff and I got right back into it again. And I, I really loved it so much. I tried to dive deep and, and find out as much information as I could. There weren't that many fighters at the time. So it was mm -hmm. possible to kind of research and really get a good grasp on almost everything that was related to the sport. And uh, I started writing for a couple of uh, MMA websites. I oh, really? wrote for MMA Weekly for a while. Oh, and okay. I wrote for yeah, I know Sure Dog. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, a, mm -hmm. that's a very popular one. Yeah. Yeah. So it was great. And uh, Ryan Bennett at MMA Weekly was the guy who hired me. And he was doing um, like the interviews in the ring at the UFC. And he was like a big part of the sport. And while I was writing, he tragically passed away from a car accident. Oh, it was terrible. He was a very young guy. And um, it, it changed my interaction with the, the website and like everything. I, I started writing for a smaller website shortly thereafter. And, you know, I started doing other things, but I still stayed a fan for many okay. years. Yeah, I think you... It's interesting that you tell me that you do writing. I think the uh, I had another. Uh, he's an MMA editor for I think it's called MMA Freaks. So sure. I, mean, I don't know if you still write and if you're looking to uh, get back into writing, I could probably hook you up. One you know, I'm always interested in in that kind of thing, so I, I would still do it, and I'm still a very big fan. Oh, okay, and then you and and then how did you get into film? So I, you I, live in California, right? Yeah, yeah. You were born and raised in California? Absolutely. So ah, the film yeah, thing, that's like kind a... Of a, it's a long story, but I'll give you like the short version. <laughs> I, living in California, I uh, worked in the cannabis industry. There was a moment there when I was doing the MMA stuff, and I also was doing some cannabis stuff. And I kind of moved towards the cannabis stuff, thinking that that would probably be a more lucrative financial opportunity for me in the future. 
and, and for a long time it was. Um, I eventually started doing this traveling hash competition. We would go all over the United States, international even. I did shows in Barcelona. I did a show in Amsterdam. And, and it was a wild, crazy thing. Um, people that were in the cannabis industry really took to it. It was a big part of uh, that time during uh, the movement. Mm. And so we started to film some of our events. I knew it was something special. I was a big fan of, of movies and, and uh, entertainment in general. And I, I kind of thought, oh, we might have something here. And uh, that was my first film project. It's, that film is still not out. Okay. I learned quite a lot about what not to do and um, all kinds of, uh, you know, crash course learning through doing that yeah. film. But yeah, it brought me to people who uh, help me now. Yeah. So do you, um, do you produce and edit everything yourself or are you partner so with I, other people? Because I looked into doing that. Um, I don't know. You, you may know this because you're doing film like uh, – Amazon Direct. Mm -hmm. I was trying to do that for this show, but um, I don't think the, the they didn't like my video quality, so I probably have to use some so better that, you, recording you mechanisms. So if you got any tips on that, you can email me. I would really appreciate it. But yeah, that, yeah, like, that's basically what do? it is. And and um, even Netflix, for example, has a page on their website where they have all the approved cameras that they have. Uh, they they all have kind of like a set of guidelines on what the minimum is for projects that they even want to look at Amazon okay. too. And uh, that's where most of our projects go on Amazon. We also use a distributor. We have, we have a couple uh, distributors that'll take our films and then they get uh, about 20% of the profit and they distribute it onto all kinds of different platforms. Uh, so you, know, you definitely got to talk more about that on, offline. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no like problem. the particulars, the particulars of it, because I kind of um, like to dabble with, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I got a podcast. I, uh, I mean, I'm not Joe Rogan yet. <laughs> I'm not a like, famous like musician yet, you know, <laughs> but I like to dabble into entertainment. That's why I have the podcast. And that's why I have my uh, live show on Twitch every Saturday at 3 o'clock. Sure. And, and I have a YouTube channel, so. That's know, how it I'm starts. Interested. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, my co-producer is very experienced. So he kind of held my hand and walked me through a lot of the process on uh, the things that I was doing wrong on our previous film. <laughs> and then the things that we do now, he does all the editing. I'm more or less the director and uh, producer in that I line up the interviews. I kind of pick the subject matter and the stories and, and uh, we go from there. Now, is, is the producer, from what I understood, uh, like a producer is more like the guy who's responsible for getting the film out there and advertising. Is that correct? Yeah, the producer is really the main person that makes the film. Uh, I, this is something I learned kind of doing it too. I always thought the director was more of a, a important person, but I guess the main producer is the most important person on a film. And uh, then there are all kinds of other different producers, like an executive producer yes. generally is a funding person. Associate producers are kind of just helpers. The, there's all kinds of titles mm. and they can vary pretty dramatically from how much actual work and responsibility yeah. you're putting in on, on a project. Yeah, there's um, a guy on, um, I, I'm a, I don't want to like go through YouTube and waste everybody's time, but there is a, like, do you do mostly like documentaries? Yes. So, yeah, so our most a... recent film is called Why You Fight, Why We yeah. Fight, right? Yes. And that's yeah. what we're really going to be here to talk about. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Because there's another, there's a guy on YouTube, like the guy's like ripped. He's really good in jujitsu. Stuart something. I think his, his whole website and everything in Stuart Films, I don't know if you've heard of him, but what he does is he does um documentaries on a lot of jiu-jitsu stuff um like the abu dhabis and the world championships and he travels around the world and he interviews um world championship um jiu-jitsu players and he does a lot of you know he has the whole camera and does all the film editing but 
you brought it up. I was going to ask, like, so before we get into it, how many mo films have you produced so far? I think I have produced eight or nine at okay. this point. And then what we're really here to talk about, everybody, and this is what really intrigued me when I interacted with uh, Jeremy on, we met through Facebook, by the way, um, is that he's got a film out on MMA and it's called Why We Fight. So this is your time, you know. Yeah, yeah, Let's talk no about problem. It. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we make primarily documentaries. Documentaries are the most forgiving as a new filmmaker because mm -hmm. um, you can use footage from the 70s. Like you can use all kinds of different stuff when you're making a, a documentary because it's a story about, you know, something that authentically happened theoretically, right? Yep. So uh, we've made all kinds of different ones with my attachment to MMA earlier on I always wanted to do an MMA film and I know a few people that have competed but I don't know uh, a lot of people that have been successful and the people that are successful they have a lot more red tape on what they can do yeah so uh, I wanted to tell a story of kind of how how uh, do people get into fighting and then what spurs them on with doing fighting as a career, even when maybe they're not having success. I've noticed also quite a lot of fighters, maybe even, maybe they never have success, maybe after their career, they always keep training. It seems like a part of fighters that they keep going on with. It's, it's more important than just a way to make money. So I asked, you know, a few different people. We have three kind of main subjects in the film. One is from a boxing uh, background. One is from a Muay Thai kind of moving into MMA where he's really trying to make it a, a professional career. And then the other uh, is uh, Jiu Jitsu and she's not really trying to be competitive, but she has a, a career related to self-defense. And oh. so... Yeah, and, and uh, her, her story is actually a really touching story because she was bullied as a, a young child. It was physical for her and uh, a really, really horrible situation that she was able to kind of turn into. Now she teaches kids and women authentic techniques that she learned doing all this martial arts stuff so that they can get confidence and empowerment and the the classes when you go to see the kids doing the classes it just mm. you can't walk out of there without a smile it's it's super good yeah it's a beautiful thing that's the yeah. one beauty about the martial arts you know Absolutely. you get uh, a lot of confidence in yourself now are all these people based out of california where you're from so it was easier for you to travel to them yes that was a key part for this particular film Okay. Because the main subject person is in California. I am based in California. And there's, fighting is a big uh, part of California. So yeah. there were plenty Great. of athletes to kind of go through. And when I did my training, I, I've done – so I trained at 10th Planet uh, when I first started with Eddie Bravo. Uh, okay. And then I did some training with uh, Toby Greer at Warrior Fitness – Okay. And I did some boxing at, uh, it's one of the Pacquiao gyms. I forget the name of it. It's, it's off of Sunset, but it, it's not right on the street. It's like right behind another business. And I did boxing there for a while. And doing all these things, you, you see fighters that are pros, that are successful. Yeah. And then you see lots of people who are not successful. Yeah. But, you know, it's really interesting. Sometimes they're the most passionate people about fighting. Yeah, uh, that's it's kind of interesting. Like, uh, I remember a conversation. Uh, like, everybody who listens or watches my show knows I'm um, a jiu jitsu practitioner. I had been up to uh, like an injury two years ago, and then I got back into it in COVID outbreak, and I have, haven't been back yet. Hopefully, I get to go back when everything calms down. And, but I, I do recall this conversation I had with a classmate of mine. And uh, his, he's got two daughters that do it. Um, I don't remember if the other one's like really been successful in competition, but uh, I think she's better at it, but she's not as um, devoted. But the other one who competes often doesn't do that well. 
but somehow it inspires her to keep going. So I think, yeah. people, yeah, I think like people who are really, particularly more, I find more with like jujitsu and I would get probably people with MMA because of the, because of the, um, because of the commitment that it has is that it's more of a way of life to them. It's not just, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I'm getting in shape or I'm doing it. Self-defense is just a part of it. That's probably why they drive to it, but it's more of a, more of a way of life, you know? Yeah. Uh, who, who do you, like, I don't know if you wanted to bulge names. Like, so who, who the characters, the three main characters, oh, yeah, actors, no problem. whatever the people you're documenting. So, uh, our, our first, uh, interview was done with Nico Ruiz. He is okay. a 155 pound MMA fighter now, but he used to do Muay Thai, very successful in Muay Thai. And, uh, our second interview was with, um, Tita Maget. Okay. Her, her um, boyfriend, or I'm not sure if it's boyfriend or husband or, or what, but her uh, significant other is the coach of uh, Nico. So oh, okay. We kind of got led towards that there. And then uh, the boxer that we have, her name is Amberly Shaw. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and, and my, produ- my co-producer knows her uh, personally, and so that's kind of how we, we ended up doing that. They all have very similar... They're very different stories, but they're also very similar in, in a certain way, too. Now, is this film out live now? Like, or Absolutely. Or getting fact, ready to premiere? Like, what yeah, if right I wanted to see it today, like, where would I be able to go? Yeah, if you have Amazon Prime yep. uh, shipping, or you get the Amazon Prime video service for free. Yep. And so our film is free to watch on Amazon Prime right now. Oh, okay. That's it might great. be on other platforms eventually. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And just if is there another film that you want to give like a quick plug into other than this one? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, the best thing for me is if you put in my full name, Jeremy Nori, into IMDb. Oh, you can get all okay. Of my you can see the whole list. You can see the whole list. And we do all kinds of different topics. I have maybe 10 other films in the process of uh, post-production or we're still – uh, interviewing. So there's all kinds of topics. Okay. They range very widely from, you know, cannabis, UFOs, Bigfoot. Uh, I did one about a zoo. We've got okay. mindfulness coming up. We've got a bullying one coming up. We okay. have, yeah, all kinds of different topics, you know. Now, um, th- this one is why we called Why We Fight, mm-hmm. and it's available now on Amazon. It, is there any chances of it going on Netflix at any point in the future? So, or I know it's harder to get on Netflix. That I know yeah, from research. I, I don't think so on, on Netflix just now. M- maybe in the future. You never know how these uh, platforms are going to change. Okay. But uh, lately we've been doing some of the other uh, newer streaming platforms that are also free. So Pluto TV has some of our films. Uh, oh, TV okay. TV I heard it. I didn't know they, do, they did do that for uh, film producers. And then um, I, I'll email you later. There was another one. I don't even know if, they, if they're still on. They, they specialize in um, web series. Sure. I just can't think of the name of the uh, – when I find it, I'll, I'll send it to you. We, we haven't um, sold our exclusivity to anywhere. So anyone who is interested in having our film on their platform, we're open to it. If it's the right fit, no problem. We'll make it happen. And how long is this um, fight to win? Uh, why, I mean, why we fight um... – video is it like an hour like how long is it on amazon it's about an hour almost all of our films are right around the hour mark either slightly less or slightly more okay yeah that, that's great and if people wanted to get in touch with you like like through social media like maybe um other producers or other directors that sure. are listening to this and they want to get in touch with you like how, what's the best way to get in touch with you so i started a instagram for my filmmaking it's called okay. sky island storytelling Okay. And that's the best way to get in touch with me. Okay. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's great. And then, um, yeah, I think, I think that's a wrap for today. But, hey, everybody, cool. watch, watch this film, Why We Fight. It's available on Amazon. And like, uh, like he said, but just in case, I'll reiterate it for people who don't know. If you happen to have an Amazon Prime account, 
Um, there's special benefits. And one of the benefits is you get to watch videos under the Prime Video Selection for free. Um, certain selections, certain certain movies you may have to yeah. pay a small rent to be. Um, same thing with the music services, certain books you can read for free. So go check it out. Hopefully, me and you will discuss offline. Um, I really wanted to get my show on Amazon Direct. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm looking to uh, get it on Roku. I'll talk to you later offline about that. Sure, sure. You do for your film. But it was great having you on the show, Jeremy. Um, and um, that's a wrap, guys. And don't forget, every Saturday at 3 o'clock, I air a show on my Twitch channel. It's twitch.tv slash Mark the Shark. Follow me on my Facebook channel, Mark the Shark MMA Show. My Twitter handle is Mark BJJ Fighter. Uh, my Instagram account somehow got hacked, so I may have to create a new one. So I'll, I'll make an announcement on that one as to what, what that handle will be. I got to figure out what happened. And um, don't forget to go to my website, www.markthesharkmmashow.com, where I all, this will also be streamed um, the same day that, that this is showing now on um, the Twitch channel. And uh, go check it out. Listen to my podcast. I got a new episode that comes out every uh, Sunday, and don't forget to check out the books that me and my daughter written. You can find them at ricordofamilybooks.com. Hopefully, you have a great day. And uh, one more point this, this episode is dedicated to Eddie Van Halen, who just passed away. All right, everybody, signing off. Have a good weekend. All right, guys, we'll be right back. But first, a word from our sponsors. During World War II, I was in prison in a Nazi camp. I died there, or so I thought. Instead, I became a creature of the dark world. Now I fight to protect my daughter. I am Marcus the Vampire. The book is now available at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com and RetortoFamilyBooks.com. Right, guys this week's episode is done on a live show but if you happen to be listening to this in a podcast format keep listening because there's more content to follow all right guys see you guys next week